and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our MiG-19P and we're looking at the guns, the two cannons it comes with for air-to-air -air use and air-to-ground use. So we've got equipped with us uh, two beautiful cannons. What are they, what are they called, Stoll? Little one Richter 30mm cannons or NR30 for short. Oh, jump. Uh, out of interest, if we go to the armament screen here, we've got the ammo. We can use high explosive with tracer, armor piercing with tracer, or armor piercing high explosive mix. We can have the 30 mil, and they you get 155 of them. That's the that's the ammo amount, isn't it, Shal? I think that's actually just the caliber, 30 by 155 millimeters. Oh, but just coincidentally, um, because according, got, yep. Because according to the manual, like standard loadout would be 73 rounds, and that seems to roughly coincide with uh, what the ammo counter shows. So that would give you 146. Roger. Okay. And you know, supposedly can load up to 90 rounds per cannon, but sadly we can't do that. Roger. Let me look at the gun on the wing route. So that's the seems to be the problem with this gun. You just don't get many bullets or shells, I suppose you would call them. Um, do you know the rate of fire, style? Yeah, it's 900 rpm, so it's 73 rounds per cannon. That gives you all of 4.9 seconds of firing time. Or unless you want to use them separately, then you'd have close to 10. Roger. Okay, right, so let's follow the manual's procedure of getting them working. First, we need our cannons turned on over on the right panel, left and right cannon. We're also going to need our sighting, so our side heat on and our sight electrics on. Next, we're going to need to arm our cannons. So we can arm our cannons with our left and our right here. We press and hold until the corresponding light goes on. Excuse me, there. That left cannon is now armed and ready to go. And you can see we have an ammo encounter here, and it's currently at 70. And obviously, once we're down to zero, we are out. Let's go right. It is a very, although we get hardly any bullets, it is a very nice cannon. Um, and that is our right gun armed. So that's our guns armed. Next, to select the gun for use, we've got our master arm here. We left and right click to choose between them, and the gun is here, the NR30. So we've got a ranging option here. We can either optical or radar. With air-to-air -air, we can use either radar or optic and for ground attack we can only use optic for ranging. Next let's talk about aiming. We're going to use this gyro driven gun sight to do the aiming and we have to set it up for use. So first of all we've got our ranging. Our range is going to be changed by this little guy here that I'm moving and let's look at the controls. So we've got uh, optical target range decrease, increase and to fire the guns of course we've got trigger. So this is our range meter here. It goes up to 2,000 meters, which is two kilometers, and that's one kilometer there. We can press those buttons as we saw earlier, and you can see we can adjust it. So today we're going to shoot at, let's say, at 1,000 meters. Uh, the manual states we should be firing between 800 and 1,500 meters. That seems, seems extremely far to me. I don't see why it would be so far. That's uh, what, 2,400 feet up to 3,000, uh, no, 4,500 feet. But that's what it says in the manual, and we're doing this in March 2019. Well, again, that is that is direct range to target, uh, not altitude. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that is slant range that we've got here. So if we are attacking a bad guy from a dive, then that is going to be the distance from us to that vehicle. Next is the dive angle when we're attacking a ground vehicle. Um, in the manual, it states between 20 and 30 degrees, and that will be judged by this ADI here. Next, we have to set up the wingspan of the target, and this is irrelevant in ground attack and air attack. So today, we're going to be attacking, we've got a lovely B-52 here on the ground, and we've also got some B-52s conveniently flying up in the air. The wingspan of the B-52, according to Wikipedia, is 47 meters. So today, we're going to set our target up as 47 meters. Now, this also applies to if you're attacking a tank or something. If that tank is, I don't know, 15 meters, you set this up at 15. I've just chosen a big target because it's going to be nice and easy to display. Now, note, there is a small problem here that if you go below a certain wingspan here, what's happening by changing the wingspan is we're changing the size of the aiming reticle. If we go below a certain size, and we're going to see that now as you drag that, it stops getting smaller. I think we've hit the minimum size of the reticle. So, with this range in mind, at about 18 meters, it stops getting smaller. Therefore, it becomes useless. So, our only way around that at the moment we can think of is lowering our range down to, say, 500 meters, and then we can go lower or doubling the size of the target let's say our tank is 15 meters and therefore what we could do is keep our range at 1000 meters and we could double the size of the tank up to 30 meters and then when it comes to ranging we'll just use half of the ranging circle rather than the whole circle that's our bypass at the moment for being able to sight on a small target if you have any better ideas let us know should be the best idea this way because uh you know that's where you're keeping the range the same Mm -hmm. and you have the same ballistic well, regarding our actual targets they are b52 so we're going to set them at 47 meters 
there. And the idea is very simple. Whether attacking in the air, air to air, or dive, we fire the gun when the target is perfectly framed, their wingspan is framed by the circle. So let's say I've got this dot on the target and I'm in the air. I want his wingspan to be touching the edge of my circle there and there. That means I'm at the correct computed distance to fire. And as well as that, once I've done any maneuvers and I'm on my final run and I'm wings level, I will uncage my sight here. It then becomes gyro driven and you can see it's just dipped down a bit there. And then it will compute for any lead, uh, speed, bullet drop and whatnot for us. So it does all the aiming for us. That's what this is all about with a gyro driven sight. Only uncage it when you're on your final run and you're not going to do any turning. If you do turn, especially violently with it uncaged, you will damage it. And we've tested it. It is models. Model, your sight just stops working. So it's really important to remember to do that. Out of interest, there's an extra button that we can use. A temporary cage, which you can have set up in your hotel, so you can temporarily cage that if you need to turn. That's something, and that means you don't have to press that lever. Out of interest styles just reminded me the muzzle velocity of these guns, which is important when just doing even general eye calculations, is 780 meters per second to roughly 2,400 feet per second, which is about the same as same of Kalashnikov or something like that. So that is that's a relatively high. It's not low, I wouldn't say. Would you agree? Well, it depends what you're firing. Uh, for a caliber at large, it's not particularly slow, no. Mm. Good. That means we won't have too much bullet drop. Something like uh, the gun on the Hawk and the Harrier. Uh, sorry, not the Harrier. Hawk and the Aiden cannon. Um, yeah, have a lot of bullet drop. Anyway, we're, we're, uh, we're diverging now. Sort of Vigan ones. Yeah, well, the Vigan, no, they are the Aiden cannons. I know people say they aren't, but oh. they're a derivative <laughs> of the Aiden cannon. And, um, yeah, they dip like hell. Anyway. Right, release in three, two, one, no. Damn, I was late because I had to, forgot to arm my burners. Never mind. Cap Tally B 52 is ready for shooty. That is fine, we'll take. Last one, there's a rotten yeah. egg. Flaps. Okay, Already. we're closing on these B 52s, so what I'm going to do is get behind one and um, do the deed. Coming on the back of this guy now, he is leveled out. I'm going to uncage my gyro. Everything should be set, so now I'm going to creep up behind him. Get him in my sights. Okay, he's just about framing it. Let's give that a blast, shall we? Ooh, I think that's way above. Let's try that again. Surprisingly difficult to get this right. Uh, up a bit. Missed. Well, oh, I got him. That's how it's supposed to work, but it's just not particularly perfect at the moment, obviously. Got him. Ah, uh, just about works. Not very easy to use. Now, if we don't want to use that, we'll just uncage, and we've now got a non-compensated sight, and we'll just have to use, put our own lead on the shot. Uh, in which case, I'm going to have to get nice and close. And I'm going to guess, I'm going to aim about, I don't know, there. Hey! And he's down. Right, so that is using the uh, gyro compensated computer sight and the um, just the normal cage bore sight. Next, we're going to go do the same for the ground. Uh, yes, the ground target. And out of interest, we've got 30 rounds left in each gun. So stand by. We're lining up for a shot on the ground B-52 now. So the range is the same at 1,000 meters. The wingspan is the same at 47 meters with cage. We're going to tip in now. Our dive is going to be 20 to 30 degrees. Speed, it doesn't matter, the sight will compensate for the speed. Wings pretty much level. You can turn a bit with the gear, this sight uncaged, but you don't want to turn too much. Right, let's see how we do this time. Fingers crossed. I'm going to get our dive angle down up to 20. Okay, that is 20 degrees on the money. Slightly low, get a bit more dive angle. That will be about 20 degrees once we dive. Right, we're just going to frame him and fire. Fire! Guess so. Got him, Charles. Took his bloody wing off. Yes. And that's it. That is showing. They're ejecting. <laughs> well, <laughs> they're fucking ejecting from the P52. <laughs> it looks like they had ejection seats in there. It actually shot straight up in the air. Lols. <laughs> and now they're all dropping off the sheets and dying because. We're they're good old boys. You don't worry about them. 
Right, so that is using the cannon for air to air. Oh, look, something's landing. A B 52 is landing. Um, that is using the gun for air to air use. You don't get many bullets, so wait until you're exactly framed right. That is how to use the sight for air to air and air to ground optically. We can use it via radar as well, but that's a different video. Okay, that's it. I hope that helps. See you later.